a, a viewer has posed the question, um, if I could recommend uh, ways for um, the in student of initiation um, to prepare for eventual work with the uh, key to the true Kabbalah, KTQ. Uh, so any anything to read on Kabbalah that would help uh, prepare one for KTQ work. Well, that question um, has led to a multitude of thoughts for me. I've always struggled to speak coherently about KTQ, about Key to the True Kabbalah. Um, and I've basically been trying to learn for like 20 years, ever since I was asked to write my first commentary on KTQ. Um, yeah, because it's always this question of what's the point of discussing something that advanced with people who have no real understanding of what KTQ is about. You cannot really understand what KTQ is about until you've completed at least step eight of initiation into hermetics. And really not until you've completed step 10 of initiation in hermetics are you truly capable of what Barden describes as Kabbalistic speech. So it's a struggle to, you know, what do I say? <laughs> um, how do I describe it to uh, a person who doesn't really understand sufficiently enough to be of value? you know, uh, value for you and value for me. Um, but, you know, I've, I've learned a lot in the past 20 years about how to speak about KTQ. So, I'll talk about KTQ now. <laughs> How's that? I want to start with the very first sentence um, of KTQ, uh, outside of the introductory bits and the tarot card. Kabbalah? Ah, first, I should note that Barden has a very strange spelling for Kabbalah, or Kabbalah. Nowhere else will you find it uh, written such. And I'm really glad that he did that, because what's in here has almost nothing to do with what you ordinarily consider to be Kabbalah. He does source his correspondence um, of the letters. He, he sort of, for the most part, relates the letters uh, that he speaks of in here to the Hebrew alphabet. Um, and he takes his correspondences from the Sefer Yetzirah. But that's the extent to which this has anything to do with traditional Kabbalah. Okay? So, his first sentence. Kabbalah is the science of the letters, the science of the word and the language, not, though, of the intellectual, but, mark you, the universal language. So Kabbalah is all about universal language. And what, what's universal language? I've spoken about it before. It's the language of essential meaning. The essence of everything is central meaning. <sighs> Words can't capture essential meaning. Our thoughts can't capture essential meaning. Certainly not our vocalizations. They can't capture the wholeness of essential meaning. Anybody who uh, has learned to directly perceive essential meaning will realize that essential meaning is so much bigger, infinitely bigger, than we can fit into words. You know, words 
capture just little small bits of essential meaning that even when you combine a bunch of words together, they don't mean the same thing as the essential meaning, the pure essential meaning. It's so big that words don't work. Utterances don't work. All they can do is they can contain the pure essential meaning in its purest possible form, you know, mentally in the realm of thought and idea, astrally in the realm of feeling and significance, and physically in the realm of speech and action, they can contain, the, it sort of reflect the essential meaning, but they can't contain the wholeness of it. They never can. So in the Kabbalistic speech that Barton is talking about, you have to connect the fullness of the essential meaning to that letter, to that color, to that sound, to that utterance. You're bringing all of that to what you are doing. So unless you can bring all of that, there's no point in uh, uh, bothering with KTQ. Essentially what it means is you have to expand your awareness till it reaches up to the greater self level and to the I, the level of the I. You have to be the I when you utter something Kabbalistically. That is what makes it magical. That is what makes it sacred. That is what is the power in Kabbalistic speech. So, work like hell at being able to do that before you really think about KTQ. <clears throat> sure, you know, there are things you can do, things you can read that will familiarize your, you with the components that Barden employs in his Kabbalistic speech, the letter. Yeah, you can, you can understand what the, the traditional Hebrew Kabbalah has to say about each of the letters and the symbolism, what they mean, etc. And you can store that away. Um, the same with the numbers or the sephirot. They describe the essential meaning of those numbers. They describe it, but they don't contain the wholeness of the essential meaning. Same with the letters. They describe the essential meaning of um, the zodiac, of the planets, of the uh, mother elements. They describe that essential meaning, but they don't contain the whole of that essential meaning. Um, and the colors, this, the light, basically. You use the light, you use the letter, and you use sound. These are the three components that you're employing, but they're arbitrary. That's the plain fact. Every culture has its spoken Kabbalah one way or another, but they use different letters, they use different pronunciations, they use different meanings for uh, the numbers, the sephirot. You know, it's, it's all arbitrary. The Hebrew Kabbalah presents a very cogent, a very coherent uh, system, but again, it's arbitrary, and you've got, to, you've got to be able to reach beyond these arbitrary um, structures that we build so that we can manipulate essential meaning as human beings. This is one form, the spoken Kabbalah, is one form of the magic of essential meaning, which encompasses a whole lot more. It deals mostly with the direct manipulation of essential meaning, instead of the um, symbolic manipulation of essential meaning. 
that's hard to describe the differences. You know. <clears throat> so, what do I recommend to the student interested in KTQ? Um, basically, to truly understand the Hebrew literature, the Jewish literature on Kabbalah, you, you have to at least study Hebrew, uh, Biblical Hebrew, and really come to understand Biblical Hebrew. Um, you really have to be Jewish. I mean, you really have to approach it from a religious perspective in order to understand the full meaning, the full richness of uh, the Hebrew Kabbalah. To understand the Tree of Life, you don't need the, the Hebrew Kabbalah, the, the um, religious symbolism, etc. Uh, and much of the philosophy, which you can only really access through uh, Jewish religion. Um, unless you have a very analytical intellect, then, then it becomes apparent. Um, but as a, the, the tree of life as a cosmology, let's put it that way, with the 10 sephirot, the uh, 22 letters the connecting between the sephirot or numbers, um, and all the other connections, uh, that knowledge will be very helpful for KTQ because it builds on basically the same system that Barton is using. Um, to understand the meaning of the letters specifically. And he talks about legality at one point and equates this with the numbers 1 through 10. Now, these are the, being the sephiron. Um, basically, legality is a central meaning. And as human beings, we can, you know, intellectually define ten rudimentary um, groupings of bits of essential meaning um, that pretty much cover all of existence and form a, a cogent uh, cosmology. And that is what the Tree of Life does. Um, so it's a good tool to learn the cosmology and in terms of the letters, learning the letters through this way, um, it's, it's very good. It gives you an, a chance to experience the letters, experience what the letters mean, not just read about or think about what they mean. And for that, of course, I uh, recommend my permutations of the tree, which works with the gra tree. The structure of the tree won't matter at all, in terms of uh, KTQ, because there is no structure implied um, in KTQ. Um, so, that I think is going to be your best entree into the Tree of Life and the, that cosmology um, and the significance of each of the letters and the ten numbers or sephirot. So, I mean, there's lots of books you can read that are good. The Sefer Yetzirah is excellent. Um, uh, Moshe Del wrote uh, a book about Abraham Abilefia, uh, which is very good, which would be sort of relevant to Barden's Kabbalah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's very uh, rich treasure trove of interesting uh, books. Uh, great philosophy and, and cosmology, um, but they would have very little relevance to uh, KTQ. KTQ, you need to understand, are the letters that we use for speech. Um, we, you, there's all sorts of associated things you need to understand, like how each letter is formed in the mouth. I mean, this is really important for the the associating of ideas in a magical uh, way to um, uh, the utterance, the actual physical utterance of the letters. Um, 
Yeah, well, I, I, I hope that has helped you in some way. See you next time. Bye-bye.